in any way. I appreciate you all uh, uh, being here tonight and, and being in prayer. Um, it's been a little bit since we've been in Bible study, but we thank God that uh, we have this opportunity to study God's word together. Um, so let's uh, let's just get right in there. Um, we're looking at um, Numbers chapter 16, if you have your Bible, as we study our Bible together, we're looking at Numbers chapter 16. So you got your Bible, Brother Leron. It's Ward. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> amen. Amen. Numbers. Numbers chapter 16. So we, I think we've all um, at one time or another have heard the scriptures that says, pray for your enemies. You know, the one that says, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who mistreat and persecute you. I'm sure many of us have heard of that. And a lot of times, uh, as the pastor, I see it sometimes a glaze <laughs> go over the eyes of the people who hear, yeah, yeah, I know I got to pray for my enemies. I know, pastor, I got to pray for them. But, but do you really pray for your enemies, though? Have you ever tried or taken a moment to pray for the person who you consider <laughs> or the people your enemy? I mean, know that it's not an easy, I mean, if we're going to be honest about it, it's not always an easy thing to do. Um, well, I, 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 I pray for my, I pray for my enemies and I, I thought I was doing it right until Moses schooled me. Y'all yeah, read this chapter here, Numbers 16, and Moses schooled me. He, he showed me, I, I, I'm not sure if I was doing it right. <laughs> I was really praying for my enemies. In Numbers chapter 16, Moses, Moses teaches us how to fall on our face for our enemies. To fall on our face for those who get on your last nerve. I mean, to fall on our face for those who despise you and mistreat you. Moses shows us exactly how it's done. So, so we're in our second part of fall on our face. Some of us, we, we, last time I talked, we dealt with the first part of it. So I want to ask you again, what comes to mind when somebody says fall on your face? What does that mean to you? What picture comes into your mind? Just stretch out to me, lay prostrate. Um, just might be a little uncomfortable, but just stretch right. out, arms right. out, mm. face down, and yeah. just start praying. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I see. Good. So physically, making a physical statement with your body, you just lay prostrate before God and, and go in. That's good. What else? What else do you see or hear? Somebody says, fall on your face. Be humble. Mm -hmm. Be humble. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Humble yourself. Right. Before God. Mm. Yeah. Anybody else? How about, you know, when you trip and fall on your face? <laughs> How about embarrassment? Yeah. Being on your face, being prostrate in a group or in a crowd is sort of humiliating. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's sort of it's it's sort of humbling as this past said as you just fall on your face lay prostrate within the group 
So yeah, fall on your face to, to use every part of your self, your mind, your body, and your spirit to intercede for people, to pray for them like you pray for yourself, to earnestly and fervently pray for a transformation, to be humbled or humiliated in front of them. So my question is, are you willing to fall on your face for your enemy? Are you willing to intercede for them and pray for them like you pray for yourself? Are you willing to suffer humiliation for their transformation? Anybody willing to do that? So in this text, Moses falls on his face three times. Three times throughout this chapter, three different segments of this story, Moses falls on his face. Verse four is the first time Moses falls on his face. We talked about it the last time I taught. And just a quick review, the people were second guessing Moses' leadership, calling him a fraud. You ain't called of God. We called of God too. God don't speak through you. He speaks to us too. Rejecting his call to lead them to the promised land. Verse four says, after they walk up on Moses like this, Moses drops and falls on his face. He said he fell on his face, one, to deal with anger. I don't care how spiritual you are. When somebody walk up on you and call you fake, I don't know about you, but I want to fight. Forgive me for my flesh. But if somebody walk up me talking about you ain't this and you ain't that, I, I, something rises up. I mean, is it just me or y'all? Or y'all, y'all like y'all been saved for a long time, and I got I need more time to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just the anger comes about when somebody comes up and denies who you are, denies your calling, says you ain't this and, and, you are, and you ain't. So Moses deals with that anger. Second reason he fell in his face was for direction from God. So God, they walked up on me. They deny my calling. What should I do? Should I let them have it <laughs> or should I shut my mouth? <laughs> should I let it go? In Moses' case, God revealed to Moses that God would vindicate him and demonstrate to the people to show them who Moses was, that he was called to be a representative for God. So again, when it comes to your enemies and praying for them and interceding for them, we got to fall on our face. That means to forgive them. And that means to get direction from God. That's what we talked about last time we talked. Now, today, we're going to talk about the second time Moses fell on his face. And that is... In this next section of the text, let's read verses 12 through 22 of number 16. If we could read three or four verses, each person read three or four verses. And we take it off to the next person until we're done. Number 16, 12, chapter, chapter 16, verses 12 through 22. We have the first four verses. Please uh, read those. Then Moses summoned Dathan and Abram, the sons of Elab. But they replied, we refuse to come before you. Isn't it enough that you brought us out of Egypt, a land flowing with milk and honey, to kill us here in this wilderness? And now that you, and that you now treat us like your subjects, what more? You haven't brought us into another land flowing with milk and honey. You haven't given us a new homeland with fields and vineyards. Are you trying to fool these men? We will not come. Then Moses became very angry and said to the Lord, 
do not accept their grain offerings. I have not taken so much as a donkey from them, and I have never hurt a single one of them. And Moses said to Kaar, you and all your followers must come here tomorrow and present yourselves before the Lord. Aaron will also be here. Somebody else pick up at verse 17, please. You and each of your 250 followers must prepare an incense burner and put incense on it so you can all present them before the Lord. Aaron will also bring his incense, incense burner. So each of these men prepared an incense burner, lit the fire, and placed incense on it. Then they all stood at the entrance of the, of the tabernacle with Moses and Aaron. Meanwhile, Korah had stirred up the entire community against Moses and Aaron, and they all gathered at the tabernacle entrance. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to the whole community. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, get away from all these people so that I may instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. Oh God, they pleaded. You are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Must you be angry with all the people when only one man sins? And the Lord said to Moses. That's good. That's good right there. Thank you. Uh, um, read that. Um, the first thing I noticed that I want us to notice is how their actions affect Moses. So Cor and Nathan, again, refuse to do what Moses is asking them to do. They deny him, saying, how, how dare you bring us out here to Egypt to kill us? This ain't no land flowing with milk and honey. What you talking about? We, you brought us out here to die. What is, what is so we're not going to come and do what you have to say, do what you want us to do. So what does 15, verse 15 says, what, what is Moses' reaction to these folks? He got mad. He got very angry. Mm -hmm. Said that Moses became very angry. Mm -hmm. Tell me, is it a sin to be angry? No. Nope. Be angry, but sin not. That, that, that says no. Is it is it a sin to be angry? No. Oh. You can be angry, but you can't sin in I mean, your anger. You can be angry, but don't you shouldn't stay there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, because you can become very angry. <laughs> Absolutely. Hundred percent. Bible says be be angry. Yeah. But don't you sin in that anger? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not easy. Because <laughs> <laughs> yep. if I'm angry, <laughs> right? Yes. On the popo. Two choice words. <laughs> so, so Moses was mad, y'all. Let's yeah. be clear. Moses was mad. It, but here's the thing. It's the reaction to anger that can be sinful. Yes. Be angry, but your reaction to it is the thing that can be sinful. It's, it's when you take revenge. It's when you retaliate. When you redirect your anger to somebody else or when you repress the anger. Moses was mad, and I know that he wanted to uh, throw some hands. I know he wanted to say, you know what, you can have these hands because you have to, you have to come up to me talking crazy. <laughs> I know he did. <laughs> <laughs> but does Moses take revenge? No. No. I, no. Does he retaliate against these folks? No. 
What did he do? He fell on his face. He fell on his face and he took his anger to the Lord. Look at verse 15. He said, God, you deal with how they've been treating me. He said, God, you do it. You deal with it. And if you choose not to receive their grain offerings, so be it. He said, God, don't accept their grain offering. Yeah. <laughs> Look at it. He said, Moses made it clear. He said, God, I have not done anything out of anger. I have not stolen so much from them as a donkey. I have not hurt one little hair on their head. I haven't done anything in my anger. God, you deal with it. Some of us got to learn how to turn to God. Yeah, I'm doing it. That's right. That's right. That's what we're supposed to do. Man. That's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> yes, okay. and it, it may be hard, but you, that's what you got to do. Some of us got to turn to God for vindication. Mm -hmm. For God to uphold you, to vindicate you, to take venge vengeance rather than us. We got to stop poorly reacting to the, the offense. Because in the next few verses, God does take vengeance on his behalf. Hmm. The Bible says, if you keep going down, it says the, the rebellion and defiance spreads beyond the few, the Korah, Dathan, and, and all of them. It spreads. That's all they said. The Bible says the core has stirred up the entire community, hmm. all the tribes. All the peoples. This one joker. <laughs> Start up the entire community against Moses and Aaron. How would you feel if an entire community questioned your leadership? I mean, like, take that in. All right. Moses ain't no superhuman. He's human, just like the rest of us. Right. Hmm. How would it feel if everybody was against you? Oh. Hmm. You didn't have one joker. You didn't have one friend. You didn't have one. Everybody broke the ranks. I mean, wouldn't that make you doubt yourself? Hmm. If, if, yeah. 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 Yes. Wouldn't that make you question your, your call? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it could be very discouraging. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. I can, I can almost bet this is where Moses was. Now, I'm like, God, you didn't tell or told me this. Now, I'm not sure that I heard right. <laughs> Thousands and thousands of people saying I'm wrong. And I'm the only one that's saying, you know, this is what God wants us to do. <laughs> I'm not sure. So, yeah, so that, that's where Moses was. But shortly after, God, he didn't allow that feeling to stay there too long. <laughs> shortly after this mass revolt, God tells Moses, that I'm about to act. God says, back up, Moses, because I'm about to take everybody out. <laughs> Anybody see that there? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get away from all these people. Yeah, there you go. Right. That's the one I want to hear right there. So read that again. Destroy them. Get away from all these people so that I may instantly destroy them. Get away from everybody. Everyone. Yeah. Because I am about to instantly <laughs> take him out. Wow. That's instantly. Take him out. Um, 
Somebody, but somebody tell me what Moses does. He fell on his face. And I'm sure he prayed. <laughs> he had um, to be praying. Aaron fell on his face. He had to be praying. Be, 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 even before, let me, let me I, I didn't jump too far. God said, I'm going to take everybody out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if God has called you to something, huh. I don't care if there's a whole mass of folks trying to tell you no. Mm. If God has told you, If I have to take out the whole entire company to let to make them see. That's what he'd do. <laughs> he's as good as his word. Amen. If I have to get through to your whole family, <laughs> if I got to tell the whole congregation that this is where we're going, God. Won't let not one person stand in your way. Am I? Am I not saying? Even if it's a whole mass of folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Because if God, that's if what God said that God, if that what God wants, is it? Amen. God will vindicate you and cause a demonstration for them to see who He is and who you are. So now let's jump back to, so after they, the, the, the whole entire community is against Moses, what did Moses do? He fell on his face. What did he do? What, what, what did he say? What, what happened? Verse 22. Oh, oh, God, they pleaded. You are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Must you be angry with all the people when only one man sinned? So even though the whole community was against him, even though everybody said, mm -mm, Moses falls on his face and pleads for them. So we're talking about praying for your enemies. Okay. First thing you gotta do, first thing you gotta do, we said is to forgive your enemies. You cannot pray for your enemies if you have not forgive done the work of forgiving your enemies. All right, that's, a, that's the first step. If you have not done the work of letting that anger go, you will have a tough time fulfilling Christ's command to go and pray for your enemies. Second thing he does is plead, falls on your face. We already said is a sign of humility, stretching out yourself, earnestly praying, putting all your mind, your body, and your spirit into it, uh, um, showing God that this is for real, this is serious. Moses pleads and falls on his face for the very ones who were denying him and rejecting him and causing him to doubt his purpose and doubt his calling and to question everything that he's been doing. He falls on his face and pleads that God would not kill them, that God would not take them out. That's real leadership. Yeah. Even though they deny me, even though they disrespect me, even though they have offended me, they are still my people. And God, I don't want you to take my people out, even if they acting crazy. Hmm. What is that, girl? I don't want you to take vengeance on them, God. Anybody feel me? Anybody see this type of leadership? Anybody see this type of praying for folks uh, who despise you? Anybody Anybody see that? 
And what is God's response to Moses? What, what, what is God's response? Keep reading in verse 23. And the Lord said, the Lord said to Moses, then tell all the people to get away from the tents of Quran. I don't know how to pronounce them, uh, and okay. whatever. <laughs> I right, pronounce. that's good. That's good right there. So God says, okay. That's his response. God says, I'm about to kill everybody in the community. I'm done. I'm taking, I'm wiping them out. <laughs> Moses says, God, you know what? I forgive them. You know, don't, they my folks. Don't kill them. And God says, all right. <laughs> I mean, do y'all do see that there? Yeah. <laughs> God says, I won't take them. I won't take the whole community out. But I got to get the root of this thing. I got to get Korah, Nathan, and Abram. I, I, because I can't allow them, the, these spoiled apples, mm -hmm. to keep ruining the whole bunch. Are you willing to ask God not to take harm on your enemy? Are you willing to say, God, have mercy on them? Are you, are you willing to say, God, show them grace? Show them favor. Show them love. Show them your saving grace. Are you willing to say, God, forgive them for they know not what they do? Amen. Any, anybody know that's what Jesus said on the cross? Yeah. He said it because it's a law that God will take vengeance for his children. Spiritual law. Romans 12, 19 says it. Dear friends, don't take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge and I will pay them back. You can trust that God will pay them back. It's a spiritual law. If you... If folks mm -hmm. come for come for the people of God mm -hmm. and you give it to God and you don't take revenge yourself, right? God will take vengeance. And 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 and, and the ones who were crucifying the Son of God, huh? How many know that they was under they were subject to God's vengeance mm -hmm. on their lives? Anybody understand what I'm saying? They were subject. So God, so Jesus on the cross said, forgive them. When they know not what they do. Because they really don't know what they're doing. Mm. They really don't understand what it means. the wrath That's right. that can come on their life. That's right. Ooh. When you mess with the people of God, mm. when you mess with God's children, you subject yourself to the wrath of God. That's right. That's right. Especially for those that, you know what, God, I'm going to let you, I, I give it to you. They, they coming from me, God. I'm going to let you handle that. God says, I, I got you. Yeah. Subject to the wrath of God. Jesus says, forgive them. Mm -hmm. But are you willing to step in and say, God, they hurt me. God, they messed me over. God, they got me good. Woo, they got me. And I know they're subject to your wrath. But God, 
Would you have mercy on them? Uh, because they because they my people. Would you show love to them? God don't God don't take them out. Do you understand how your prayer for your enemy can save their life? Yeah. Wish I had somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I see it. No matter what they do. That one prayer for your enemy can change their heart. That's right. Yep. Mm-hmm. One prayer for your enemy can move the hand of God to show them grace rather than death. Any, any, any comments, questions, concerns right there? I believe. I believe. I think it can help us too when you forgive your enemies because you walk around with all that mess. You can't get your blessings because you, you're mad. I, um, I remember talking to a young lady and I said, you still mad? Get over it. If you going to pray about it, leave it alone because you still sound angry. And uh, she said, no, I'm not. I said, yes, you are. It's in your voice. And you can tell. I could tell because I'm that close to her. And I, she had to admit I was telling her the truth. And once she did that, she got better. Mm-hmm. You know, but everybody can't do that. You got to be, you got to be in a certain space because it's hard to forgive people, especially when you feel like they've hurt you, mm-hmm. you know, and, but I, I, I can't walk around being mad. I've never been able to, even with my husband being an alcoholic. I, I know I go back to that a lot, but that was a, a journey. And he taught me, I'm not going to be angry with you. Now, I wouldn't talk to him if I was mad because I knew what, whatever I said out of my mouth that wasn't always saved, wasn't going to be good. So I wouldn't talk. And he already knew he had said something he shouldn't have said because I was angry. I don't get angry easy, but when I get angry, I'm angry. And I really have to go to the Lord. For real, because that's just who I am. I usually say, "Oh, okay," or I may not say nothing. I might just be still, and and I'm learning more and more about being still, and just letting God work through me first, and then I know He's already worked everything out. But it's hard to forgive your enemies, and and you walk around thinking you ain't got none. Yes, you do. You just don't know who they are. Right. Yes, you do. Yeah. And eventually it will come out and you'd be like, what? Really? You know, I did what? When? You know, because and you may not even know. You may not know you've hurt that person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, yep. So, yeah. Any, any other comments? Um, just to piggyback what Miss Crawford said, uh, I think that when you have enemies, I think, I mean, I think in life you never go, you're not gonna have people to always like you, receive you, or do all of that, and that's okay because you're not called to be everybody's friend. You know, you know, because at the end of the day, God sends those few people in your circle where you can confide in. But like sometimes, um, it's like you gotta keep your keep your grass cut so you can see the snakes. But sometimes, you know. You, 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 you might never even see the snake. It could be your, your right hand man, you know, like a Judas. But you, I think you just have to understand that praying for your enemies, you know, is good because you like you change their heart. I think you, you said this happened last year, a Bible study. Is that you know, you said mm-hmm. I was like, if somebody's hungry, you feed them, and they could be your enemies, and. The enemy might turn to a friend because you, you know, fed them when they top a knee. So it's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, I think, uh, I think for me, you know, it, 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 
it's just because I'm not going to trust myself with, I'm with too much of nothing. I, I, I've been kind of checking myself uh, a little bit lately, you know, because I'm, I'm looking at the world and, you know, it seems like there's a lot of anger out there. There's a lot of frustration. And then, you know, I can kind of feel myself being swayed a little bit. You know, I can be in line, like I was in line at the store today. This guy got too close to me, didn't have no mask on, you know, and, <laughs> you know, and so, you know, those temptations are there, you know, even like when you're driving, you know, this, this, you know, it's just this anger that can really set you off. And uh, so to me, it, it, it just pays to be in line with the word of God, to be in line with the Holy Spirit, to consume and allow the word of God to take root in your spirit. That's why Bible study, that's why prayer and all of that stuff, because there's just so much pulling, so much of the world pulling at our hearts. And, you know, that's what God looks at is our hearts. And, you know, now I think that's why Moses, he kind of saw a little bit about, uh, hey, these are just a few people that are influencing all of these people. Yeah, yeah. And Moses had a heart for people. Yeah. And so he just interceded on on, on their behalf. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's just, to me, it just takes as much as I can get of the word of God in me, Lord, so that I won't be swayed mm -hmm. and be influenced by the world. And it, it, it can just so easily happen because there's just so much going on, mm -hmm. man, it can just kind of overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. That's, that's a great connection, you know, how the people were so easily influenced. They had just saw, you know, the waters mm -hmm. come, up, come up on both sides, you know, the Red Sea, they, just, they, they saw that and all the other miracles that God has done, but so easily swayed by these few who were furious. And how we can be, you need to watch how we are, you know, can be swayed by the world or by what we watch or by what people say, by who's around us in our family or uh, having, you know, actively looking at yourself and say, you know, no, you need to deal with that. You're being swayed, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a that's a real good. And, and also too, Pastor, and kind of like what our expectations were, because there was an expectation in this text that, you know, they kind of talked to Moses about, you let us out here and you haven't done this, you haven't done that, you know? And so they had a certain expectation that uh, led them down the wrong path. <laughs> you know, uh, leaning uh, onto your own understanding. Yeah, it, 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 it was taking too long for us to get this milk and honey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody said that guy, where is this milk and honey that you promised me? <laughs> taking too long i'm starting to doubt what you, what you're talking about <laughs> mm -hmm. that's real good that's real good so we said what one prayer can move the hand of god uh, uh, uh to show your enemy the grace of god that's why we got to pray for our enemies because our prayer can change their hearts i mean it, it's it's can change their situation. Um, and this type of prayer is not only good for our enemies, but this type of prayer is necessary for the enemies of God. I mean, the enemies of God are those who don't know God, those who refuse to acknowledge God, those uh, who live their life in opposition toward God, who don't acknowledge God as their savior in their creed, in his and their creator, the, these, the same very situation, do you know that these enemies of God are subject to God's vengeance? Because they're enemies of God, they're subject to that very same vengeance. That's why we have to pray for the lost. Why Bible says pray for the lost? Um, God, I know they messed up. I know they didn't do everything right. I know they reject you and they deny you, but God, would you save them? 
save them from their sin. So they do not suffer the wrath that is to come. So they do not suffer vengeance. Is there anybody willing? Is there a people willing to pray for the salvation of the lost rather than sit back and watch the suffering of the lost? Because if you're not praying for the lost, that means you're sitting back and, uh, and, and, and watching the suffering of the lost continue day by day. Praying for the lost has got to be a continuous practice for the people of God. Why? Because we don't want people to suffer the wrath that is to come. We don't want people to suffer in life and in their afterlife. The Bible clearly shows us that prayer can save them. <laughs> prayer can turn their life around. And while we, you know, we get busy in the, all the things that we are wrapped up in with the business of life and with our jobs and family. And some of us have uh, health issues and many of us have family issues and marital issues and all this stuff that's thrown at our face. And it's so easy to forget about the loss. It's so forget. We pray about these things and keep them out of focus. God do, you know, touch this situation, heal the situation, but we cannot forget about those who are suffering without, we may be suffering with Christ, which is, which is something, but people are suffering without Christ, which is a whole nother story. Suffering, uh, in confusion and doubt and worry and loss without Christ, our prayers for the lost has got to be a continuous practice for us. Just like God changed the trajectory of the life of the community of Israel because of Moses' prayer, God can change the trajectory of life for this community on Linwood. <laughs> if we will plead and fall on our face for them, mm. If we would humble ourselves on their behalf, if we were willing to be humbled and, and humiliated uh, 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 on their behalf, if Bob says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, would lay prostrate, would, would, would fall on your face, plead, uh, seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways. Oh. And God said, I will hear from heaven forgive their sin and heal their land. Anybody willing to fall on your face for the lost, to, play, to pray for them like you're praying for yourself, to pray for, for your class, your inactive members, like you pray for yourself, to pray for your church, like you would pray for your children, to pray for this community, like you would pray for your family. If you would just pray for your enemies, like you pray for your friends. Moses prayed and God said, all right, I've heard your prayer. I won't kill them. I won't take them out. Moses was, he laid prostrate. God, don't take them. Don't, don't kill them. God heard his prayer. God, I, I believe that if we fall on our face like Moses did, God will hear our prayer that God will begin to save this lost and dark world, that God will begin to transform hearts. If we would fall on our face, put our situations and, and, and stuff to the side for a second, for a moment, for, oh my God, God will begin to heal, not, not, not just them, but he will begin to heal our bodies. He will begin to heal our financial situations. He will begin to touch our families. If we could just fall on our face for those who are lost. I believe that God will begin to change things in our lives. Any example of how prayer has saved somebody's life? Any, any examples anybody got of how prayers saved somebody's life? How, you know, how have you seen prayer turn Things around. Is there a witness? Yeah. Yes, there is. 
Well, sh- share it. Share if you're willing. Well, my when my daughter got had had my granddaughter, and her liver, kidney, and pancreas all shut down at the same time. And that was on a Sunday. And on Monday, they were taking her to intensive care and said she wasn't going to make it through the night. And I said, well, no, she's going to be okay. And he said, well, I don't think so. Said, okay, we've been praying. You've been, you've been doing that. We've been praying. And she's going to be healed. She, and she's healed. She is here. And I just had to stand on that. And um, family came to the waiting room at the hospital. And we all but had church. I mean, we were just praying. And I called Joyce on that day, that morning. I said, Joyce, they've taken her to intensive care. They said she's not going to make it. And she said, she's going to be okay. I just got up off my knees. And I was prostrate on the floor. Mm, mm. Look at God. Mm. You know, so yeah, I've seen that. And who wouldn't serve a guy like that? You know, you, but my faith had to be totally in him, mm. totally, because everything was shutting down. And and literally, she was should not have been here. Mm. Wow. Well, uh, medically, she should not have been here, but God saw fit and kept her here for a reason, her mm. and my granddaughter. So, yes, sir, God does. Answer prayer, and he will take care of that. Yeah. Amen. Appreciate you sharing that. Of how falling on your face, prostrate before God can. Yes, sir. Like when you talk about life. prostrate, yeah. <laughs> Joy said, girl, I can't hardly get up off the floor, but I'm on my way to the hospital. <laughs> you know, so she was out there prostrate. She said, I just yeah. had to lay on the floor. And yeah. He'll answer your prayers. Yes, he will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how can we collectively pray for, for our enemies? How can we collectively pray for the enemies of God, for those who are lost? What spaces can we use to pray for the lost? How can we put this into practice? I know it may seem a little newish or like that, I mean, it's it's okay, but I really feel like, you know, places that we aren't doing it, like, uh, well, places that we are continue to do it, like, you know, using social media, using other means to people be on different platforms, like, you know, YouTube, not YouTube, um, sorry, you know, maybe TikTok or something like that to really, um, you know, kind of get the word out a little bit, just like, maybe you see a post you agree with, but the one thing about these platforms, you're going to have always have oppositions in them, like, and the people that you have to pray for are the people in the comment section because sometimes mm-hmm. they mean mm-hmm. well, but I think sometimes, like you said, praying for the lost, praying for um, folks who don't know God, because sometimes when you come against people who are actively debating you, like, I got time today, those are the people <laughs> who, uh, <laughs> those are the people who, are literally having a sword and trying to swing at God to disprove yes. God yes, to sir. make you look like a fool. But at the same time, they're not mad at you. They're mad at God or, you know, or, you know, there are, I feel like sometimes, like us get on social media, there it's a platform for everybody. A lot of people have a lot of different opinions and different things. And some people get caught up in just a person who's, spewing nonsense mm-hmm. like literally nonsense like I don't want to get too deep in there but like the Hebrew Israelite movement we know that you know just w- what they believe and different stuff you know our Bible says something differently and even doctrinally it could be disproven mm-hmm. you know but there are people who are so much passionate you know filled and when you get other people to agree with your message you creating a, a army of lost people now now it's just like God, God has to use us individually doing these posts or, you know, let, let somebody be the reason you um, question those things. Because otherwise, it, I think that it has to be like a tug at your heart in the first place, to soften your heart, to mm-hmm. even the, the, the key to come back with it. Like, you said there's no God, but why are you still here arguing with it? You, you, you're here to disprove me or you just shouldn't have 
are here to just really, you know, make a point. But, you know, uh, biblically yeah, it yeah. says that, you know, only a fool says there's no God. <laughs> That's in the Bible. Like, God said, you be a fool, not to because it's like, you know, like science could prove a lot of things, but you no, know, it's just a good creation. You know, that's that's how I feel like when I come across those posts. You know, I, I say what I got to say, or I try to do my best to, you know, hey, um, if you got any, if you got somebody that's close to you, or somebody you know in the local neighborhood, you know, go to talk to a pastor, because a lot of that stuff stems from church hurt. Mm-hmm. Somebody that said somebody they like. Mm-hmm. Now they now they said all pastors, all oh, this pastor got caught up on the scandal, stealing money. All oh, this pastor got caught up stealing. Um, <laughs> even in our own denomination, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. we ain't gonna speak on too much that, but you know what I'm saying. Right. Those are the examples of people who say they claim to be, you know, this a man of the cloth. This is this how your church doing. But I think that that's. I think that temptation happens. You know, we, we all we all have temptation. Like just because a person is a leader in the church, they're, they're not exempt from temptation. You know what I'm saying? But but I also think that a person who's in church, um, or not in church, but like leadership role, they they acknowledge that and they they put stuff in place so they don't fall into that temptation. Don't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's some real good stuff. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, social media has become a platform for people to express their deepest angers. I think especially because of, of that distance, it's not necessarily like a face-to-face type of deal. People can spew out um, whatever they want. Uh, and, and from that, you can see where people are. You can see the anger uh, where people are. Uh, I did a post for the Black Leadership of Ministry, um, new doctor of ministry track that we're doing at the school. And you wouldn't believe some of the posts that people said. I mean, like, good God, negatively, you know, um, all kind of stuff. But you see where people are. But I like what you said, using that as a space of not to get angry or take revenge or but to use it as a space where they understand understand where people are, um, and then begin to use that space to pray for people. Uh, um, use that as an area to um, using their anger, I guess, as you saw, as a space to begin to pray for people uh, and uplift them. So that's really good. And so basically, you're saying uh, using the thing where people are angry at. And social media is one space, you know, and using that space to begin to pray for for them. So that's some that's some real good stuff right there. Um, yeah, and um, just like I think that the gumption is it's like saying stuff face to face. Like there's no type of consequence for that on the internet because, like, right, right, right. Truth, truth be told, internet's not a real place. Like, Facebook is just something we go to. That's not a real place. Like, a real place is uh, 4400 East Glenwood Boulevard. And that church, that's a real place. That's an actual place where I could go there on Sunday, see my church family. But a lot of folks who uh, argue with those internet things or posts, you know, it's a good avenue for that. But at the end of the day, you have to, you have to translate what's what's on what's real and what's reality like that's really just a place where people go to talk but like that that's a whole dis- different discussion for another day i don't want to take too much time yeah, but it, i think it express is a, a space where people express their deepest there's no need for secrecy or, or holding back or not saying what you feel social media sometimes is a space where people reveal their most deepest darkest whatever and that's not all bad because as we are uh, agents of Christ, we can't, we, we can't be voided of where people are. We can't blind ourselves to how the world is feeling. We don't want to distance ourselves so much that we, we don't know what to pray for. You know what I'm saying? I think some of that is good because we can begin to pray for where people are and even build ministry around, around that. So that, I, I, you know. Even though they express their most deepest stuff, I think that it still can be used for the good, you know. So, mm-hmm. 
Any, any other uh, comments or questions? How can we, um, other spaces where we can begin to pray for the lost? Um, how can we collectively, how can we collectively or individually do that? I think uh, like when we, we go out into the community, uh-huh. there's always seems to be some people that are willing to pray with us. And when we went out, what, several weeks ago, visited uh, several homes, there were three that was willing to accept prayer. Mm -hmm. To me, I look at that as the Lord has left a door open Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Now, all of those people that we pray with initially, you don't know whether or not they're lost, they're saved, or what. Right, right, right. So, but the door has been left open to continue to ensure that those people are not lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And most people, most people say, yes, pray. If you ask them, you know, can I pray or can we pray? Now that was some, yeah, you said most, but that was some. You still get some like, no, get off my, get off my. Yeah. That's fine. God bless you. I'm gonna still pray for you. Just not with you, though. Not now. <laughs> not now. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> but that's good. Absolutely. Just asking our community people, our community people in our community, for prayer. Um, and then hopefully that, and then that may open up a door for them to receive Christ. You know. Through, you know, maybe even asking them, you know, we built a relationship with them. You know, it's been laying on my heart. You know, I wanted to know if you if you know Christ and would you mind if I share Christ with you, you know, share whatever. So prayer opens the door for us to share the gospel for sure. You know. <clears throat> Any other spaces where we can make prayer for the lost a priority. Well, when you have class meetings, you can collectively pray. When we have our class meetings, that can be something that we come together and pray. Absolutely. Um, each one of us can pray or it can just be in our prayer mm-hmm. close out or whatever, but it can be like that. Absolutely. Definitely praying for those in your own class who may or may not know, know, know Christ. Absolutely. I think anytime we come together for prayer, prayer for the lost, has got to be on our minds um, because we we desire because you know we desire that people know know Christ, Christ. We have a relationship with Christ that they're not that they will not suffer the wrath of God, but they will they will come to say yes. So keep that in mind this Lenten season as we um, do our best to uh, uh, increase our prayer life and increase our prayer devotions. Say a prayer for the lost, those who don't know Christ, that they will come to know him. Um, Pray that somebody would be saved, that somebody out of this season would say yes to God, that somebody would let go of the anger towards God and say, yes, I'll I'll, I'll receive you. Um, This Lenten season, keep that in your mind, keep that in your hearts. Um, and we believe in that God's going to do uh, some great things out of that. So let us pray as we um, leave this space. Lord God, we thank you for the study on tonight. Thank you, oh God, for everyone who came out on tonight and those who had a desire to be here but could not. We thank you, oh God, for your word. Uh, Lord, plant your word in our hearts. Give us a heart. 
for the lost. Give us a heart for those who don't have a relationship with you. Give us a heart for those who are suffering yes, Lord. without you, oh God. Give us a heart for those, God, yes. who need you in their lives, who need your peace and your joy and your salvation. Give us a heart, oh God, to look beyond our own situations, our own heartaches, oh God, Father God, and to keep in mind those, oh God, who need a relationship with you. God, we do pray, oh God, for the lost even now. Yes. Those who have been on our minds, those who are family and friends, those in our community, those in our church, Lord God, who do not know you, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that they will come to know you. God, we pray, oh God, that they would not suffer the, your wrath, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you, you would turn their hearts around. We pray, oh God, that you would, Father God, impart within them a heart of forgiveness, God. Whatever the anger is, whatever it is, oh God, we pray, Lord God, that they would let it go, oh God. That they will say yes to you, oh God. That they not, would not go another moment, another minute without you, oh God. In their lives, oh God. Be in their hearts, God. And then, Father God, be, oh God, in their situation, oh God. Reveal yourself to them. Let your grace, oh God, arrest them, oh God, so that they wouldn't be able to say no another day. God, we pray, oh God, and we intercede on their behalf, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Put it, place us in those spaces that we can share your gospel, that we can share your, your message of salvation and hope and peace and freedom, oh God. Put us in those spaces, oh God. We can remind them and, and share with them, oh God, that you are a God that will wash their past and their sins away, oh God, and wash them and make them new, oh God, and give them, oh God, a hope and a future, oh God. Father God, in you. So, God, we love you. We honor you. We claim the victory, oh God. We claim it done in the precious name of Jesus the Christ. And we said amen. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Amen. Thank you. Good night. 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 I live for a minute, Pastor. <laughs> we just prayed out. All right. All right. God bless you. God bless. God bless.